And today, he finally realized the dream. Let's hear from him. A man is the top end. I've tried every different scenario coming here. When I drove for the snake, you know, I tried acting like it was the biggest race in the world. Um, obviously, that never worked. And then I came here and said, okay, it's just another race. And that never worked. It came close. Had great race cars. And just my wife, whose birthday is always this weekend, September 6th, and it's tomorrow. But um, she's been coming with me every year. Um, she was with me. I stood behind Blaine Johnson's car. I, they just announced I was getting a ride in Don Perdome's uh, funny car the following season and I stood behind my buddy Blaine when that accident happened so it's an emotional place to come to every year um, and I went to the hospital that day there's just a lot of uh, stuff I've got to get out of my head when I land because uh, it's got so many memories of uh, good and bad so um, I just tried to keep the business side of team ownership out of my head there was so much going on there's a lot we're planning for next year and I was just trying to act like a driver and just show up in the pit area and make my crew chief proud and that's what I've done for 27 years no matter whose car that I drove and um, so I, I, I was I thought I was doing pretty good until I staged the car the first run Friday and then went and got my Darlington stripe on it and then I thought oh my god you're the biggest idiot what are you doing and uh, we put the other body on it the Supra GR Super body and um, that, that is the body we put on in Bristol and we went on to win the race so Slugger Labby came over and he reminded me that that body that GR Super body that we are running right now is undefeated <laughs> it's never been beat which we won the, the Bristol race and then put it on here so I, I, I just tried to approach the weekend you know just to we had a few goals we wanted to get around Matt Hagen and it was a lofty goal at that point but points and a half which is awesome that nature does that we wanted to get into second place Robert's so far out it doesn't matter so we did want to try to achieve that. We set our small goals, and obviously to qualify. A Friday night scared me on that goal. So, but Guido and, and Medlin and, and the NAP Auto Care guys did what they do. And Guido said this several times to me, and it really tells you kind of how big a deal it is. And he mentioned it again before this run, that there is no way, those guys, he was blown away by how well they put the car back together. And we had to change engines a couple times, but that car was a bracket car, and I rolled it in that final run there. It would probably went 88 again, but it went up there and did the same thing. I, I can't tell you how hard that is for a crew chief to do with a 12,000 horsepower motor to go that consistent. I mean, it was like a bracket car, which is crazy for a, a Nitro Funny car. So that was my approach, and uh, obviously getting to go through the race yesterday, got those juices that I talk about, those countdown juices, because it's coming. And you got to be ready for it. And everybody gets a little lax. It's just another race, just another race, and then Indy's here. And then guess what? We're going to Maple Grove, and you start the playoffs to fight for the biggest thing in your life. So um, we accomplished all those small goals, and then some. And the floodgates opened up. 
Let's open it up to members of the media. Questions for our funny car winner, starting off with Phil Burgess from NHRA National Dragster. We're on all weekend, and even coming into the call out, everybody was talking about that they wanted to have lane choice. How big was it to have lane choice in the final? It, uh, I think it may have finally, the sun when it came out, which I thought, it, it started popping out, and I thought, oh, I wish they would delay this a little bit and just let a little more temperature come. It's not a bunch, but the right lane, these are too tr tricky, and it's, it's, it's only perfect that it's Indianapolis and it's U.S. Nationals because this, I don't care what race car driver, or motorcycle, whatever, these are two tough lanes to negotiate. You can never relax like some of the tracks we go to where they're just perfect and you don't have to really, you've got to be on your game. They all do something. The right lane takes you inside if you're not careful and then it wants to take you out at the other end. The right lane does all kinds of crazy stuff, so you've got to be on your game every single moment. So um, I think it did. I think it warmed up just enough in the final. You don't see those guys do that very often. They did it in semifinals, and we were hoping they were going to try and do it again. Uh, but Guido and Medlin, um, and I know Jimmy Proc working all those years together, they love to beat each other, and it's a big challenge. They love racing each other. And, and I've said this time and time again, the two – the two people that benefit the most is Robert and I. We get to strap into these things and get it on, and there's no games played. We both go up there, stage the car, and uh, he's as good as it gets. So you got to be on your game there too. But uh, I said at the other end, that team, I know Cask has been hot here lately, but uh, that Jimmy Proc AAA team with Robert has been the car to beat, and it's, they've raised the bar for everybody, including us, and uh, they made us better. So and I told Robert at the other end, they make us better every time we go up there. So that was a tough one. How soon did you know he was in trouble? I did. I rolled him in, stepped on the gas, and listen, you start hearing weird noises, you start feeling weird stuff, it's the final round. I was feeling weird stuff on the burnout, and I was about to get on the radar, I'm not saying anything. So you start just feeling and hearing the strangest things. And uh, no, I never saw him, but I expected that car to pop out its nose, you know, at any given time. I just, I've been, Disappointed so many times, that I just was waiting and waiting. And I go, it's not going to happen. He's going to pop out there and take the win away, and, and then my win light came on, and I just couldn't believe it. Bobby Bennett, Competition Plus. So, uh, can you tell me, Ron? I've got two questions about first about the exchange with Don Perdomo before you raced. Oh, he's been texting. Well, he, I called him last night from dinner, but he's been texting me every day. He's at home. He watches NHRA TV. He uh, watches Fox shows. And right when I got ready to put my helmet on, I went to put my phone in the Sequoia back seat, and I, it lit up, and I looked, and it was Snake. And we talked for a minute last night, but he, it says, uh, one more to go, go get him, kid. And it, it's got the arm, and uh, I thought, man, that's cool. That's pretty cool to be over there, and it was just a weird moment because I look over, and there's the arch, there's Indy, you see everything here, and I'm getting it a text from the guy that I built models and played Hot Wheels, you know, it's, it's a, it was a weird thing. So it was like, man, I put the phone in there, put my helmet on, and it just pumped me up. So that was cool. I can't wait to call him. Not that you need to sneak up on anybody, but with Tasca and Robert kind of focused on beating each other up, you were able to kind of... And Hagen. I mean, there's so many cars. Look what JR did. They stepped up with low ET of the weekend yeah. at 85, and then we had to run on the next round. We lost lane choice. We stayed in that left lane all throughout the count, the, the count out, the uh, shout out, call out, <laughs> count, shout, down, count. Um, and that was cool. We, he, he said, let's try to keep the left lane, so we're doing everything we could. And then today we lost it, second round. And you know, you get a little confident, you know, and then I hear Reinhardt and said 385, did he say 385? I couldn't believe it. So that we lost lane choice and there we were in the right lane. And I thought, oh boy, here it comes again. I'm gonna be going home early on a Labor Day, but uh, Guido did his thing, we were right down the right lane. What do you think when you, when it, the bad fortune didn't come your way, did you just think, oh wow, maybe? It, I, a few years back, and even last year at Wilkerson, especially last year at Wilkerson, um, I truly believe about, you know, I've, I've said it time and time again, this place has got, you know, such history and the spirits that, of our sport and such big moments that uh, you look back, Kenji, and you go down the list of people that have won this have never won really much else, right? And there's a lot of those instances where it's just crazy things have happened in India, and it's just Indy does that. So I, after last year, I said, 
when it's time, it's time. I, I'm just, it's like the weather. I'm not even gonna worry about it. We're gonna show up, and if Mother Nature says it's gonna rain, it's gonna rain. I just say, when it's time, it's gonna let me win. And apparently, I, I've done some good stuff here lately because it let me win. Ron, you've obviously had an amazing career, two world championships, 70 wins in your career before today. To experience a weekend like this, you win the call out, and you win any U.S. Nationals for the very first time. Can you even uh, begin to describe? As a team owner, that's the biggest this. thing, and a uh, pretty cool moment with Antron down there, who's also doing the same thing. You know, our sport's so great right now, and Antron's helped me a ton, so I, he's, I think of him as a brother and a teammate, even though we're not teamed up. And uh, just uh, how crazy is it to win a world championship and then go right into the next season as a team owner, you know, and have Toyota behind me and have my longtime sponsor, Napa Auto Parts, to go in with the number one on the car. And you just, like I've said before, you can't script that much better. And then to, to rattle off the first win for Toyota's new GR Supra and then to win Indy and the call out and number one qualifier and run like we've run. And, and the biggest thing is the momentum that we feel like we have now going into the countdown. I mean, that's, that is huge because we're going to Maple Grove and it's going to be fast, right? That place, you better stand back, Jack, when it, it's good and that's, I love about Madeline and, and Guido and the guys is we can they can throw down with the best of them. And when it's hot out, they can show what we could do when it's warm out. So, unbelievable year. Can't even, uh. If you would have told me this in January when I was pulling my hair out and hunched over or crying in a fetal position just about every night, wondering how I was going to get through, even to Pomona. And you would have said I was going to win a couple races and then win Indy and win the whole shebang. Oh, and somebody just reminded me, I paid 100 grand today and 80 grand yesterday. So Ron Caps Motorsports needed that badly. I can't tell you how much that's going to help us going into next year. We got trucks and trailers and all kinds of fun stuff. That, uh, I'm having so much fun with the other thing, but it's a lot, and uh, this helps a ton. So thank you, uh, Glenn Cromwell. <laughs> Lee Craft, Monday Morning Racer. Congratulations, Ron, and I've been a fan of yours since I was a little boy and couldn't go through the tobacco trailer. And more as a representative of your fans in this moment instead of just the media. For all those for so many years that have said, go get it, get this one, and they finally see you now as a fan, win it. What do you got to say to your fan base? Oh, man, let me tell you about it. Every weekend I'm carrying somebody's ashes in my pocket. I've got this kid brought this over. His dad had been bringing him his whole life. His dad passed away four months ago, and he asked if I would carry this. So I put this in second round, and it, he brought it. I gave it back to him, and he brought it back for the final, and he goes, man, please he goes I want you to win bad will you please carry him again with you and so I put it in my pocket again we just won US Nationals so that's my fans that's that's our great fan base it is uh, it's crazy they, they they provide so much support when you're down and you know you could have a bad day and lose and you're walking around and you want to just snap at somebody and you stop for a second and somebody you make their day um, and then they end up making yours. And so, yeah, we got a great fan base. It's It's been a fantastic life for me in NHRA. Growing up in the sport as a little kid and then getting to be where I'm at right now. And shoot, I get to win with Matt Smith again. Antron, Craig Anderson wins his 100th. He milked that for a long time, didn't he? <laughs> but yeah, crazy. Final question before we let you go, Ron. Uh, and you've experienced this once before in your career. You will no longer get questions about when you're going to win. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to miss it? No. <laughs> 2016, no, I'm so glad we finally won, Chad. We got so old being compared to. Yeah. No, I will not miss that. I can't wait to call Ace. I can't wait to call Snake. I can't wait to call Ron Leong. Because I know they're all watching, and they're they're as proud as, as we are. So yeah. How do you celebrate this? Oh, dude, you know me. We're, it's going to be a large time tonight. <laughs> <laughs> my cousin Donnie's in town. My wife. Uh, we've been trying to win it with her birthday on this weekend since we've been coming. She's came here every single year, hoping, and it's never happened. So she's suffered more heartbreak than I have. And she's here, and I flew the kids in. How crazy was I? Flew both kids in, and they hadn't been here in years. So. Just, it was like it was just meant to be. So we're going to have a good time, really good time. Go celebrate. He's your funny car winner here at the Dodge Power Rovers U.S. Nationals. Ron Caps. Your order.